Hello, my name is Nigel Griffiths. I work for IBM. This is a new series, AIX in Focus. We're looking at SMIT or SMITI, the Systems Management Interface Tool that comes with AIX. Now we'll come to it later, but please don't tell the Linux guys about how good this tool is. We're going to assume that you have some basic Unix or even AIX or Unix light system like Linux user level command experience. So we're not going to go through those plenty of ways of picking up skills in these basic commands. So why are we covering this simple command good for systems admin in these series of videos? Well, Smitty was voted number two out of 32 best bit features of AIX by AIX users at conferences and meeting them and on the web. Very highly rated piece of AIX and one of the success reasons for AIX in the first place. Just have interest, what else was going around here? Well, number one is PowerVM, which is the hardware, the hypervisor, the VO servers, and the HMC, the way we do our power servers. And AX fully uses all those features. Number three was Enmon, where I've created other YouTube videos, basics and advanced, and how to get the graphs. Then we have two more features of the hardware, the live partition mobility and the dynamic LPARs. Again, AX fully uses all of those features of the hardware. Then we have some more core AX features, NIM, Maxis B, and the Logical Volume Manager, and I'll be covering those more in other videos. If you want to find out more about the full 32 best features of AIX and how the votes went, then you can find it on my AIX PERT blog. I'll put these URLs into the YouTube description for this video so you can click on them there. Now briefly before we go to some hands-on stuff, there's actually two commands in here, SMITI and SMIT. SMITI is a text-based menuing system with panels that pop up and fields that you type in and then you hit return to get it to go off and do whatever you want. It can be a, a dumb screen, directly connected on RSD32 sort of thing, HMC console, it could be a SSH session or using VNC to get to the system. If you type in SMIT and it has Windows available to X Windows as a graphical user interface, then it actually starts the graphical version of the SMITI tool. And it's exactly the same menus, the same words, and the same structure. They're actually driven off the same template. That means if you use SMITI and then you start SMIT, it's exactly the same apart from it's in pretty uh, graphical user interface. The main benefits of using SMITI to do your systems admin work, it's very quick and very efficient to get things done. You don't have to learn lots of commands or lots of options or go reading manual pages. It will tell you what it needs to do to get something done. So it's very easy to use and it actually reduces your system admin errors. It also tells you the command that's actually going to run to get the job done. This is very good because it can teach you the command to use and later use in scripts. And I find if I'm trying to do something four or five times in a row or I need to create ten file systems, for example, I can go into Smitty, find out the options I need, and then I can cut and paste that out into a script and then just change the sizes or whatever it is for the file systems and just run them as a script and it's very comprehensive it's unique it covers the whole of AIX and as things have changed and improved with AIX over the years they've added the smitty features there's nothing missing out of the tool quick example of that is you want to get your AIX on the network that's the first thing you've got to do when you start things up so you run smitty and then we have this thing called a fast path so you type in TCP IP and it takes you straight to the panel that does your networking. You select the interface, it will tell you what's available. You don't have to find out the funny peculiar names of your interfaces. Then you give it the IP address, the hostname, gateway and DNS settings into the fields and you hit return. And it's done. Six seconds is fairly generous on how fast you can get this thing on the network and correct first time. You don't have to go and find the file to edit, try and remember what the format looks like and now what's the command you have to run. Oh, they changed it a year ago, so I'll have to go and read a half dozen web pages to work that out. It just does it all for you. Before we actually try out Smit or Smitty, a few little facts and features to get you going, stop you making a bunch of mistakes. First of all, when you have a panel up and you're going between fields, navigate using the arrow keys, do not hit enter or return key. The enter and return key, if you're in a menu of menus, then it selects the item you're on, which is pretty obvious. But if you've got a set of fields up, when you hit the return key, it will execute whatever in those fields at the time, not go down to the next field.
use the arrow key to get to the next field until they're all right then you hit the enter key there's a bunch of function keys in here and you've got to remember that smitty was out when aix was young 30 years ago everybody was using terminals if you're a youngster then you'd be horrified by the limited screen space we had 80 characters across and 25 rows down and the function keys were very important to get things done very quickly. They were usually programmed up to do various things in each application. These days, of course, if you're using a terminal emulator, the chances of the function keys actually working as you'd expect, or sometimes you might have to use a function key like FN to get the function keys to work, because on my laptop they're all overlaid with other functions for the actual ThinkPad. Well, we have a bunch of uh, function keys in here, and because of the problem of the function keys may not do what you expect, the gurus quickly worked out that if you hit escape and then a three character, that's the same as a function three. So for the past 25 years, I've just used escape three, rather than trying to find where the F3 function key is on my particular uh, keyboard that I'm using at the moment. This is not like a control F or a shift D command where you press two buttons at the same time. This is you hit escape and you let go and then you hit the three and you let go, although you only have to be a microsecond between the two of those. So the F3 does back one level, get out of where you are at the moment. Uh, F4 brings up a list of options. For example, it could be a list of file systems that perhaps you want to uh, delete or change. And it'll bring those up. You select the one you want. You'll hit the enter key to finish that selection. And you go back to the other fields. Tab key, some, some of these fields are have, only have a limited number of uh, values, like true and false, yes and no. Maybe there's like one, two, three. Um, and then you go back to the previous one. So if you can tab through those and see all the options and go to the one you want. F6 is command preview. We'll have a look at that. We can actually see the command that's going to get run. F8 will tell you the fast path name. If you keep going three levels down in the mini system and to get to, for example, networking, then you can work out the fast path and you use Spitty fast and the, type in the fast path name and you go straight to that particular panel. So it's a lot faster to get things done. F9 allows you to escape from Spitty, run a few commands to come back to the same panels exactly where you were. F10 or Escape 0 allows you to completely escape Smitty in one go rather than backing up through the various levels of the menu system. If you're using the Motif X Windows version then you can hit F12 or the exit key at the top of the window. Here are all the parts of Smitty that are used most often and their associated file parts. Smitty C by IP, we'll go and have a look at that in a second. The update all allows you to update all the packages installed from a set of fixes in a particular directory. The next one, makes this be or make system backup, is fairly obvious, but it talks you through all the various options and helps you work out the command combination you actually need. If you want to capture Enron performance data, then you can use the Smitty Start Local, rather an odd name. I tend to use Enron directly as I'm a bit of an expert in the topic. If you want N1 to capture stats every day at a particular time into a different files, then you can use Smitty Persistent Local Recording Dummy, which you have to laugh at because it's not exactly a fast path, it's a small essay. And uh, what the dummy's about, I have no idea, but uh, there it is. You can use that if you want to, rather than work through the permutations and combinations of the command. Another one, particularly when we're installing AIX, we want to change the time zone to a predefined one. So it's changed to Z for time zone, and it's known as the Olsen system. Smitty so date, obviously, LVM, if you want to go into the logical volume manager to create or manage your volume groups, or create a logical volume and set up paging, for example, that's all in there. File systems, FS, if you just want to do a journal file system 2, it's JFS2. NFS is another one that I use regularly. Now I won't be showing you all of these, we'll be here for two or three hours. It's worth going through the menu system to go and find the interesting bits for you. So here I am on my home machine called Blue. I'm logged in as NAG, that's been my user ID for 40 years. Now I'm going to type in Smitty. Nice and quick as you can see. It comes straight in and now I have a menu system in here that I can browse up and down. If we just click into here, then uh, do some install software, and then it's going to do some software saying, right, where is the directory where the software is? Usually I'd NFS mount it, but I will do all of that. I'll come out of this, escape 3, or the F3 key, if the F3 is working fine, uh, and that all works fine. And we can do that a couple of times. If I just want to get out of it, I'll do the escape 0, or F10, and we're back out. Now I want to show you the 
graphic user interface, we thought that this was going to get removed. But I just tried AX 7.2 TL4 SP1, which is the latest when I made this movie, and it's still in here. This is still good to go. So we use Smith. Now, if X Windows isn't available, it will start Smitty on the screen, as we saw. If it is available, it will actually start it up. There we go. Now, let me just drag this onto the screen. I need to resize it a bit. Uh, up here. And then I can stretch it back out. Now, you see, this is the same list of items that we had um, on the screen earlier. As so if I click in Software, Install and Install, and we've got the same question, where is the software? And I can come out like this. If I'm lots of levels down, I can just go back up to the top menu using this panel here. Another typical job that I want to do is use uh, Communications in here, TCP IP, Minimum Config. It's asking me which of my networks do I want to use. I've used the ET interface, or the EN interface, and uh, here's the things we need to type in to get that done. Now you might say, well, that's long-winded three, four menus down to actually uh, get here. If I cancel out of this, I can do a show fast path, and it's telling me TCP IP. Okay, so let's cancel out of this and exit F12 in here. We come out if I do smit tcp ip and i spell it correctly smit tcp ip it now starts me up in the right place to do the minimum config as we we're doing before the same thing happens if we're on the terminal it just ties you off to exactly the right place now I'll come out of this and actually open one of these things up. Here I've ins manually installed a copy of uh, AX72 TL4SP1, um, and it's not on the network at all, so I'm not using NIM or PowerVC to do the uh, automatic installs and things. I'm doing it the, the old-fashioned way. If we look at ifcon config minus a never known why we need minus a in ax uh, so we're not on the network so again we'll type in uh, smitty well we can just try smith it's not on the network so it's definitely going to work in the text mode and tcp ip minimum config en0 and in here i have to put in the various details of my network interface and i'll i will auto complete this using the magic of the movies so there we go I've used the down arrow key to get to the other fields, and it's all good to go. I'll now hit the enter key, and that's it. We're on the network. This means it's nice and simple. It's the same as it has been for 30 plus years. So how did it actually do that? It hasn't got any logic in itself. It's using regular AX commands. See the F6 in down in here, so I'll do escape 6. And this is the command that it actually ran to do it. You'll notice in here that it has these single quotes around every field that you could have input. This is to stop you accidentally putting in perhaps a space in the host name and then typing in minus X12345. And then that will go into the make TCPI command and could cause all sorts of havoc so it's limiting the damage you can actually do but you can see exactly how to do that you can cut and paste this off the screen and put it into a script if that's what you want to do now I'll come out of that and let's see if we can ping my host machine there it is it's on the network now just for showing off purposes let's do an export display equals blue session one this is going to set up that this virtual machine now can use the x windows display being used by blue one and if i type in smit in here i can use the graphic user interface here in practice we don't tend to do that so we tend to use the regular features using the text mode so that we can actually get some jobs done. Okay, I'll clear the screen and we want to do some more system admin. I am the standard user called NAG here and um, so I need to go to super user because the bulk of Smitty is only for the super user, system admin tool after all. Regular users can do a couple of things. There's some ways of running a PS command and maybe starting an N1 to capture some data, but the bulk of it is super user only. So let's go super user. So if I can get my password right. Now when I type smitty, let's use the normal way that we tend to use it. Not a lot of people have X window set up. Okay, so let's go in here and do some other regular things. 
down in here we have storage management we've got logical volumes file systems and other bits and pieces but let's just use smitty jfs2 and i don't have to remember where it is in the mini system so i can go straight there we can do various things adding a general file system adding a file system the enhanced means the jfs2 um, to a previously defined logical volume. If you want to be very specific about how it's laid out on a disk, then you create a logical volume and then put a JFS2 inside it. And there's all sorts of other things you can do in here. Um, removing it, of course, we can do snapshot management functions. Let's add a quick journal file system in the root volume group. In here we have an example. See these plus signs means this. you can put input things in here. Hash means a, a number, but it's not obvious if you try typing things it says if you used uh, escape 4 you can see what the alternatives are I come out of that or I can just hit tab in this and it just cycles around the various options I want uh, gigabytes it deals with megabytes of data this, these days and how many want them um, that's sorry, 8 gigs mount point slash demo automatically mount when the system restarts, that's pretty obvious you want that on. So uh, we'll just hit go and go off and do it. There we go. Now if I come back one level and hit the F6 command, we can see the actual command it's going to use to do that. Now there's a bit of a shell script in here because depending on whether you selected megabytes, gigabytes or half K blocks, it's got some extra work to do to put in MG or nothing. But if we scroll down I'm using the arrow keys in here to do this I could probably do page down as well to do this if we find it down in here th this is a shell script is going to run called X and it's passing these parameters to it and it's actually going to use the CRFS create file system command telling it it's going to be definitely a JFS2 because you've already selected that and it's going to have this list of parameters in here so again you can cut and paste these two lines and build it up yourself so if you're going to have to create 200 file systems unlikely but there we go then you could capture what you've got here put it into your uh, shell script and change the uh, the names and the sizes of the file systems and build yourself a script very quickly and get it exactly right every time okay now if we decided that oh no we're on the wrong system I didn't mean to do that how could we actually uh, deal with that well why don't we first do something like um, you'll find in here df minus g g is nice isn't it yeah you tried doing that at the next herd here it looks here that there isn't a demo file system at all the answer is smoothly doesn't mount it for you I have no idea why I suggested that there was an extra option to mount now but they haven't done that so we have to go and mount the file system ourselves as the root user Oops, try again, df minus g, and there we go, demo's up, and it's 8 gigabytes. Now let's just go back in here and say, okay, it was on the wrong system, and we're going to have to remove that. So we go down to remove, you can see, add, change, and remove in here. Um, oh, there's nothing to type in here. If I type typing slash demo it says no, use pf4, function 4, or escape 4. So I'll do escape 3 to get rid of that and escape 4 to get rid of the list it's looking for all the file systems in here and you're going to select the one you want off the list do get this right if you delete slash home it's gone boys and girls so do get these things right your system admin don't forget you may be using a command uh, menuing system but you do still have to get your work done right remove the mount point the directory as well yep and we'll say are you sure it's going to delete information that you may want to keep yep we're definitely sure and it fails that's because demo is currently mounted would be nice if it says do you want me to unmount it before i try this operation but it doesn't so this is a case where and i do this regularly we can use the f9 or the escape 9 it says you're going to proceed to go out to shell you say yes so we do a u mount slash demo at that point, did it unmount it? It did. I do a control D to come back. I'm still in failed output here, so I'll go backwards on with escape three, and we're good to go. I'll do it now. And this time it removed the file system. So by making a few mistakes, I've showed you a few extra options in there that can be very useful. 
Before we finish, I want you to note that in your home directory there's a smit.log and a smit.script. Now the smit.log is a bit messy, it notes all sorts of changes and little stanzas which may be interesting for some people but not for me. Smit.script, however, notes the commands executed, and remember when we created the demo file system, it actually generated a small script that it calls to actually get the work done. So it saves those details in Smit.script in a shell script format. So here's an example of the demo being created, the time and date that was done. Here's the X function that it actually called to do the work. Here's the actual create file system command it's a jfs2 of course so then there's parameters that are set in and here's the call of the x function with the actual parameters so if you wanted to you could cut and paste things out of the smit.script to rerun on other computers maybe making changes as you go one final hint smit has a minus x option that lets you go in and set up everything you want to do it but when you hit the enter to execute the command it says okay i've noted that in the script file but i'm not actually going to do it so you can actually capture the script of all the commands without actually doing them this can be quite useful preparing scripts that you want to run on other computers so that's that's it for AX in Focus this time around looking at the Smit or Smitty commands. Until next time, don't forget to subscribe if you want notifications of new videos that I create. Don't forget a thumbs up encourages us to carry on and gives me the justification for spending my time on this.